Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. As part of our consumer education series, this is our baseload episode. It's the amount of energy our homes use in their natural state, not including heating and cooling. We're going to travel to Raleigh, North Carolina to join Sarah Kirby as she shows us ways to figure out the energy that our appliances use. We'll also see ways to cut those costs and how Energy Star appliances will help. No matter how often we turn our appliances on or how long we use them, they do cost us money. Appliances add to our monthly energy bill. In fact, appliances coupled with refrigeration account for approximately 17% of our energy bill and therefore it's important that we choose and use our appliances carefully. Some appliances that we use today, we use 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Other appliances we may only use occasionally during the day. And then even further, some appliances we may only use a couple of times a week or even a couple of times a month or once or twice a year. So one of the questions that we often get is how much energy do appliances use? The Department of Energy has put together a listing of typical appliance uses and their estimates that um, those appliances use in terms of kilowatt hours per each year. For example, a refrigerator may use approximately 1,000 kilowatt hours per year. A microwave, about 200 kilowatt hours per year. A typical dishwasher uses approximately 600 kilowatt hours per year. Smaller appliances, such as a coffee maker, may only use about 125, or a toaster may only use about 70. Now, if we think about the laundry room, a clothes dryer will use approximately 900 kilowatt hours per year, and a washing machine, a little bit more than 900. Remember though, as I said, the actual use depends on the energy efficiency of the appliance itself, and that can uh, vary according to brand as well as according to model, the exact specifications of that appliance, how often, and in what manner that appliance is operated. If you really want to figure out how much an appliance will cost to operate, and you want to figure out how many kilowatt hours per year it will operate, and you really like math, there is a formula that we can use. First, you begin by taking the wattage of an average appliance, and we're going to use a microwave for an example. You take the wattage times the number of hours per day divided by a thousand times the number of days per year you'll use, then you multiply that by your utilities kilowatt hour rate. So it's going to cost approximately $21.05 to operate that 800 watt microwave for one hour a day and 260 days a year. Now if you don't want to do that because you don't particularly like math and you want to get a little bit more accurate um, information about how much wattage an appliance will use, you can use something called a watt meter. And there are a variety of different kinds on the market today, but what you basically do is plug the watt meter into the wall, you plug the appliance into the watt meter and turn it on, and then you also insert the information about your community's um, kilowatt hours, right, your utilities kilowatt hours, right, into this and that will give you a cost of how much it costs to operate per day, per hour, per year. And so we're here at a local home improvement store, we're in the appliance section and we're looking at some of the appliances. Fortunately for us, to give us a little bit of information about energy use, um, the Federal Trade Commission has developed the Energy Guide label. The Energy Guide label has been a around for a while, since about the 1970s, and it's designed to help consumers compare energy costs among similar appliances, as well as to get an idea of how much an appliance will, will use over a year's time. And it actually contains a wealth of information. Um, so if we look at the Energy Guide label, the first thing we'll notice is up here in the corner, it gives us some specifications about the model itself. We'll notice that it gives us a number here, which is the estimated yearly operating cost for this piece of equipment. So in this case, 
This one is $41. We're looking at an energy guide label on this side and it's actually $51. But you see it gives us a range really between $42 and $52. So on this side, the one that only is going to cost us approximately $41 per year to operate, it only uses 383 kilowatt hours per year on average. This other or this other refrigerator uses 479 kilowatt hours. Now one other piece of information that you will maybe find on an energy star or an energy guide label is this energy star symbol. So as you can see, this is an energy star appliance, the one that cost us $41 a year to operate. This is not an Energy Star appliance, which costs us $51 approximately a year to operate. So we're here now with Bob at a local home improvement store, and he's going to tell us a little bit about Energy Star and Energy Star uh, appliances. Energy Star is a, uh, I guess you say, a testing procedure that the government uh, certifies certain types of machines. They don't do ranges, they don't do dryers. They do refrigerators, dishwashers, washing machines. Uh, by the way, not microwaves. They come up with an energy standard and say, okay, this exceeds what the normal average appliance is. And here's how much on an average year, it, with average use, with a 2.3 children family, how much that this will actually use in a normal home. So that each year, that energy guide setting will actually become a little bit more strict than it was this year. But really, when you buy an appliance, there are two costs. There's the cost of the appliance itself, as well as the operating cost. And sometimes the purchase of an energy efficient appliance, like an Energy Star, might be a few dollars more than the others that are, do not qualify for Energy Star. But over the life of using that appliance, mm -hmm. you'll actually save money because you're using less energy. Well, in the case of the Energy Star dishwasher, it really comes down to the fact that they're using a lot less water than they used to. Also, they're better insulated than they, many of the models used to be. Uh, side benefit being that they're quiet, but they have cut down on a lot of the water that they use, and that's represented in the Energy Guide. Now, when it was compared to all dishwashers in that group, that's what this line indicates. In other words, there are some that are more efficient than this, but then there are some that are not as efficient as this that still might qualify for Energy Star. Okay. In order to make that, many of the dishwashers now use what they call triple filtration. Okay. Back in the old days, what a dishwasher used to do is a dishwasher used to use 13 and a half gallons of water. Now, most dishwashers can wash on as little as three and a half gallons and as much as about seven and a half. So they've actually cut the water usage in, uh, in the 20 years or so uh, by half or more. The hardest thing that new people were having trouble with, the new refrigerators run much longer than the old ones, and they can't get it over in their mind that it's using a smaller compressor using less electricity, but it's running all the time. It's okay that it's running all the time because it's like a Volkswagen Beetle, not a Corvette. So it's using very little gas to go ahead and get you there, but it's providing good, constant cooling. So we're here at EnergyStar.gov under refrigerators and we're going to look at the Energy Star Savings Calculator. So I'm going to click on this and it asks for me to answer some questions about how much my refrigerator or freezer costs to operate in energy and then it'll tell us how much it'll save using Energy Star. So I'm going to input a little bit of data and then I ask it to calculate savings. So what it does is it tells me here that the annual cost of running the, my current refrigerator is approximately $161.23. It will tell me how much I can save if I purchase an Energy Star refrigerator. If I buy an Energy Star, it will only cost me $39 a year to run. It can also save me more than $610 over five years. So these calculators can really provide us with some additional information um, that can help us make that decision about whether or not we need to purchase a new appliance in order to, to really um, see some savings on our utility bill, as well as whether or not it makes good sense to purchase an Energy Star energy efficient appliance versus a conventional appliance. So if you get ready to buy an appliance and you're, you're wanting to recycle your old appliance, it may be through the company that you're buying the appliance from, it may be through your local utility, mm -hmm. or it might even be that you can go to energystar.gov and look for those recycling programs that they have listed 
for specific states. You can go on the EPA website and many times you find out if I bought a Energy Star washer or dishwasher or refrigerator, I still might be able to get some sort of a tax write-off of my next year's taxes just because I was efficient this time. That's right. Plus, by uh, calling your local utility company, find out if they have any programs. Many times that they'll have it, like I got in my uh, most recent statement. So it could be in the form of a rebate, it could be in the form of a tax incentive, or it could be in the form of some sort of other reward that your appliance or your utility company but, will reward you with. Not that everybody is super green or anything like that, but it gives everybody a chance to do something for themselves and for the environment at the same time. If you're looking for federal tax credits, the best place to start is Energy Star Gov. There you'll find all the things that qualify for Energy Star federal tax credits. You might also want to go to your state website to see if there are any particular items that qualify for state tax credits. Um, important to know these won't save you money immediately like a rebate will, but they will save you money when you fi file that yearly income tax return. Also, a great place to start when you're looking for rebates and incentives is to look at the database of incentives for renewables and efficiencies at desireusa.org. That's D-S-I-R-E-U-S-A.org. There you can click on your own particular state and see what kind of rebates and incentives are available for energy efficient appliances. So what can we do to make our existing appliances more efficient? Well, perhaps the best way to begin is by operating that appliance more efficiently. And we're gonna use our dryer as an example. So one of the things we need to do to begin to operate our dryer more efficiently, whether it's an Energy Star appliance or one that we've had for a number of years, is to make sure that we don't overfill it. Make sure that you've got the proper size load in the dryer and that it's not overstuffed. The second thing we wanna do, if we've got any um, settings on our dryer that are moisture sensors, we wanna take advantage of those. That way, as the moisture leaves the garments in the um, dryer and they become drier, the dryer will turn itself off when it senses that there's no more moisture. The other thing we need to do is to make sure we clean our, our lint screen on a regular basis. If we keep this clean after every load, then, then the clothes will dry a little bit faster and it's also safer for us as well. We need to make certain too that the vent hose in the back of the dryer is free of any obstruction, that it's not kinked or compressed in any way. That way the moisture um, leaves the dryer quickly and we don't have any issues concerned with fire. Some appliances continue to draw power even though you think you've turned them off. You may have pressed that power button and it says off, but they continue to work because they've got standby power and they're using what we call phantom power or vampire power. If we look at the watt meter, we can see that even though the item is off, it's still using 2.8 watts of power to run that clock. And while that may not seem like very much, if you think about all the appliances that use this standby power um, and all the appliances and electronics that you have in your house that may be using it, that can add significantly to your energy bill. Well, the first thing we can do is unplug the appliance. So you can unplug the appliance at the wall if you wish to. The other option is to put it on a power strip. And when you want to turn the appliance off or a series of appliances off, you just turn the power strip off. Now, of course, if you've set your coffee pot to make coffee at 6 a.m. and you turn the power off, you're gonna wake up at 6 a.m. and have no coffee. There is another option available to you um, if you're concerned about phantom power and you're looking at electronics, and that is to use a smart strip. Now, a smart strip is really kind of interesting because it allows you to keep some items on while turning other items off. You have a control outlet. So example, if we're gonna use electronics, we put our television into this control outlet because when we turn it on, we want all of the other components that relate to the television to turn on as well. Now, a smart strip will actually help you save quite a bit on your power, and, and it's a fairly simple way for us to um, control the phantom or vampire energy we may have in our home. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. Thanks, Sarah, that was a great introduction to baseload. One thing to note is that appliance use varies greatly from home to home. Changing habits is a good place to start. But that being said, appliances have improved drastically over the past decade. Those online calculators will help you decide whether it's time for a change out. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, 
techniques and expert advice.